Hi there, Mark here, Torbay Law Angler. 3rd of March, 2023, been fishing about three times this year and caught one little tiny fish, hence lack of content. So I thought I'd do a review. I'm gonna do a review today of this. This is the Ripped and Ready X5 Adventure Travel Rod. And my wife said to me last year, I wanna go for a walk, but I want a little rod that I can put in my backpack, and if I wanna go fishing, I can go fishing. So I bought this for me, and I bought one for her as well. Hers is just called the Traveler, I think. This has got five rods in one in it, and um, a couple of, reels it's got a fixed ball and a fly reel hers has just got a fixed ball with a spare ball this has got a spare ball as well um the reason i bought this one there's a couple of really good channels on youtube one's called bang average fishing the other one's called adventure fishing uk um i like watching their channels a couple of young lads they do some really good content and they catch more fish than me as well they recommend these so i thought i'd give you my opinion i bought this myself i think it was about 110 pound and i think my wife was about 80 and Honest review coming right up, so I'll tell you what I like, I'll tell you what I don't like. Stay tuned and we'll have a look and see what's inside. So what I like is it's a nice compact size. It's easy to carry, it's got a little handle here and it's really well made. That's been in my suitcase once and been in my bag, kicking around Tenerife and it's absolutely fine, still in perfect condition. So let's open up and see what you get inside. So open up the little bulbous bit down the bottom and we've got two things in here. The first thing we've got there's a fly reel. So it's a little bit tricky to get out. So I've just put this in a piece of plastic bag. Okay? So I am a fly fisher and I'm not brilliant at it. And all we know about fly reels is they are a medium for storing the fly line on. You don't very often wind with them. Some people seem to, but I was told by um, a professional coach when I took casting lessons, all this does is hold line for your reel to trap your, your line to transport it around. Um, because when you're casting out, you've got a big pile of line on the floor. And when you wind it in, you generally pull in with your, with your fingers anyway. So it's all right. It's, it feels okay. It's, I think it's metal metal some kind of alloy and it looks pretty robust i mean the whole thing what i will say about this one it is what it is you've paid 120 pound for essentially five rods and two wheels and a spare spool so realistically my proper fishing gear shimano right uh, reels and i use um high tide salty shape dash rods if wherever possible diawas those kind of things um i'm used to spending more on a rod or a reel than this whole combination so you've got to bear that in mind but it is pretty damn good so that's the first thing that's inside it is your fly reel also inside you've got this little bag here little cloth bag which is absolutely shocking it's really really thin i reckon if i pull that gently the stitching just pops off it it doesn't even hold the reel in there it just automatically just flops around you'd be better off using that to actually wipe your hands with so that's a negative point there Inside we've got a spare spool. These have been um, soap water coated as well, so these, they should last okay. I've caught on this rod and reel a little fish when I was in Tenerife, nothing monstrous, but I've also cast big lures with it as well. So I've got this little spool here loaded up with it's probably about eight pound mono. And this is the main body of the reel. Excuse my messages going off there. The main body of the reel, and I've got some braid on there just in case I want to cast out some bigger lures as well. So what I like about the reel, the reel it's... It's all right, really. I mean, like I say, it is what it is. It's it's a cheap reel. It's a three thousand side reel. It feels okay. It doesn't feel too bad. Again, it's not a Shimano. It's not a Daiwa. It's just a cheap reel, but it does the job. I've probably used this for about ten hours fishing in Tenerife, and it's worked absolutely fine. One thing I don't like about it. I mean, look at the, the smoothness on that's not bad for a cheap reel. I don't know how many bearings it's got. So it's called an RR3000 as well, just in case you need to know. One thing I don't like is when you loosen the, the handle, as soon as it starts to fold down, that's it. Don't go any further, otherwise it will fold out, fall out. It's almost like the thread on the inside part of the handle isn't quite long enough. Another half a turn and it would have been really, really good. But you've got to be really, really careful because it will fall off. If you're on the rocks, like the first time I used this, I unscrewed it like I would a Shimano reel, for example, um, it fell off. But not a problem because I managed to save everything anyway. So it's a nice little nice little 3000 reel. So it's not brilliant, but it does the job. You can't view this whole setup as your number one and only 
fishing rod and reel combination. It's something to use on holiday, it's something to keep in the back of your car for impromptu trips. If I'm going on a proper trip, I'll put the proper rod and a proper reel in the car, but I'll keep that in there as well, just in case I break one. I might break a rod, I might break a reel. I've got a spare one. So that's the reels I've to look at. What we'll look at now is we'll look at the rod sections in the actual um, package. So let's have a look at the rod sections now. So the rod sections actually housed, I've taken out just so I can show you, in this material around the outside here. So on the outside it's really, really strong and rigid. That's where your tip sections go. And this one is it's still very, very rigid. Um, not quite sure it's made of something like plastic and covered in a piece of uh, piece of cloth or something. But yeah, so it's gonna keep your rod sections pretty good. I've had this in a suitcase and my wife's got one as well and it's been in a suitcase, been absolutely fine. Had it in a rucksack for a hollow. So the first thing I did when I took this out, I've left it a little bit loose now as I held up the rod like this and the section fell out of the bottom. So again, the quality of the stitching on the peripheral bits is not that good. You can see whack and grip big hole down the bottom. Um, it is what it is. Remember, you're buying a cheap rod, you're not buying a premium brand. Uh, brand. But having a look inside, we'll look at the, the butt section first. So standard butt section and your fixed ball reel will clip on there. So let's say you want to go fly fishing. For those that you know, you know. If you don't, you don't know. This goes on the opposite end. It doesn't cast that way, it casts that way. So what you do is you pull out this end, put it in there. Now that is your fly fishing handle now. Isn't that clever? I do like that, that's very, very clever. I did have some reservations when I saw that and I thought, well, if I can pull that out with my fingers, nice and gently like that, and put it in there, it's going to fall out. But it ain't too bad. I'm really shaking that and it's staying in, but you can still pull it out. So that's your butt section, multi-section butt, uh, butt section. You can put the fly rod on it, sorry, the fly rod on it, or the spinning reel on it. Um, what I like about the bag as well, apart from it falling apart, obviously, it tells you what the weights are in there. So you can see it's next five adventure, casting weights, light, five to 20, 10 to 25 on the regular, and five to, sorry, 25 to 50 on the, on the smallest tip. So then you've got your standard sections, the ones that don't fall out, your next section. Got a little clip there for your hook as well, quite like that. And obviously your other sections that go together to make the rods up. And then you actually move on to the tip sections. So I've got three in my hands here, so, this is your thinnest one, that's your lightest one. And then we move on to the regular one, I think it was 10 to 30. This one here is a fly tip because the end ring's a little bit different. So when you do get your fly set up, ready to go, that's the actual tip that you put in there. And finally, and of course you can use that for regular fishing as well. And finally, we've got a little baby section at the top and that goes in the end of the rod combination and that's used for your heavy uh, casting weight, I believe it's 25 to 50. I've actually used that one, I've used all these tips, I've caught a couple of little fish on there, I saw a guy catch a barracuda, so I stuck that one on, went to the local tackle shop and bought a couple of lures, didn't catch one unfortunately, so there you go. So, again, the bag, not impressed with this bag, not impressed with that bag. It's a couple of minor negatives, but the whole rod, reel and combination, and the innovation in all of this little setup here, I think is absolutely fantastic. It's about 100 quid, like I say, with a 10% discount code. If you follow the guys that I mentioned earlier, they've got a 10% discount code, and I think they probably get theirs for free. I got this one by my own cash, and I got my wife by her own cash, and they're great. We're gonna keep these in the car now, the spring and summer are going. Good to have as a backup rod and reel as well. Generally, if I'm going, let's say I'm gonna go um, perch fishing, I'll take my perch rod, my wife will take her perch rod. If I keep this in the car, if one of the rods or one of the reels breaks, we've got a backup. And of course, when we go on holiday, we've got plenty of bits and pieces that we can go fishing with. So I hope you like this review. I hopefully haven't gone on too long. My honest review is, it's a seven out of 10. It's a seven out of 10, it's a solid seven out of 10. It's a good little kit, I do like it. I think it's quite twee as well. The hats off to the guys at Rigged and Ready because they've done a damn good job. A little bit more attention to quality on the on the little bags and would have been there for probably another point. So hopefully you've liked this, leave me a thumbs up, smash that like button, set the alarm bell, whatever it is you've got to do. Like, sub, share, take care of your own right now. Peace out. Hang on a sec, don't go anywhere. I forgot to tell you something really important. They've got a two year guarantee and they'll repair your rod, no questions asked. If they can't repair it, they'll 
choose the current rod of at least equal value to replace it. It doesn't matter if you step on it, the dog chews it up, you run it over with a car, they said they'll fix it. And they've also got five year support as well. They'll replace any rod parts for up to five years with minimal cost towards parts and post. That's pretty damn good, isn't it? So you know if you break your rod or your tip section, you can get another one. One thing I have had in the past, I've had a Shimano STC rod. It's expensive, it's about £100 just for a rod. I broke the tip section and it was going to cost me about 80 quid to get another one. Whereas I've seen on the website, these guys actually do it for, for pennies, for pocket money. So well done. And I also got, when I bought the um, rods for myself and the wife, I got their um, travel line hooking mat as well, which is fantastic. I use it a lot. And they also got spoons and spinner sets as well, braid, and I've got some spoons and spinners as well. So apologies for the caveat towards the end of the video. I'll try better next time, I promise. Take care.